Okay, we are continuing off in Oto Ward. Karmic Engine, No Battle, Part 1. At the portal of Akasaka, Monotonous Ward, Tokyo. Kotaro, I didn't know you were still using this portal. Osei, what are you doing here? Let's skip the formalities. There's no one here, and your men are out scouting, right? A certain portal in the west is about to come into play. Aren't you going to join up with your guildmates? Hmm... No, relocating it to the new portal in Makana wouldn't make much difference. Our clientele would simply shift from the rich of the Monada Ward to the militaristic faction of the West in the Rima Ward. So, I figured we may as well use this unclaimed portal until then. Our Yama Guild? Hmm. Unlike a former sp soldier of Gehenna like you, it's more my style to just do as I please. Even if the Akasaka agents have disbanded, that doesn't mean that the Fuma Ninja Tribe can't take on independent missions. Fuma Ninja Tribe? Hmm. After all, we still owe Rapongi for last time, so we can hardly refuse to take on their requests. Besides, they pay well. I won't ignore the goals of the relocated agents entirely, of course, but I was assured I was free to pursue my own agenda. <laughs> Kotaro. I know that is not your true reason. Unless I miss my guess, there's someone in the West, in the Rima Ward, whom you don't want to see. I take it. Isn't there? Or maybe it's not you, but someone else inside of you who doesn't want to run it into them. That student active in Tokyo's Congress, the top political war maker of Tokyo, and their original word, the founding. I feel obligated to point out that you're wrong, I'll say. I'm just working for my coin as always, nothing more. I'm not interested in the affairs of this Tokyo. My policy is to let them all do as they please. That goes for the other members of the agents too. You know, Tadatoma and all the rest. None of us are in it for the guild. We just use it to achieve our own ends. Am I wrong? How uncharacteristically glib of you, yet appropriate to the AG look, I suppose. What do you want? I got better things to do than to entertain your unpleasantries, you know. Ah, uh, well, do forgive me. Banter is a habit of mine. I hope you can laugh it off. Here, I even have a present for you. Take it as a sort of apology. What do you say? A present? Ooh, goody. OC takes out a note and tosses it to Katara, who catches it and unfolds it. This is... Yes, from one of the three true guilds that lord over this Tokyo. So there are three, only three true guilds, and the rest are not as true. And your words, the uh, militaristic faction of the West. Uh, so the warmongers would be considered one, I guess. This lets the members of the warmongers, under whose control that patrol of Narima Ward currently resides. Hmm. <laughs> A guild master dispatched by the game masters. Seven world representatives, and an assortment of lower rank members. They are very aggressive, and at present, they are bolstering their numbers by spreading memories of previous loops. Yeah. The warmongers. The one who stands at the forefront is the representative of El Dorado, Tuscatlipoca. Go on. From what I've heard, Tuscatlipoca is followed by a posse of Jaguarian transients, but I've heard rumors that no one has seen the true form of that warrior. Uh, is that armor takers are in place of the Scatly Poker? <laughs> to think that such a high-profile figure could still be a mystery. I feel like I've been blinded by smoke. Maybe they have a shape-shifting role like mine. They do. They do indeed. At least that's what the chapter 10 banner. Research file of Tuscatli Poco implies. Oh, cut it out with that lousy acting of yours. What, are you trying to make me point out that your secret artifacts really aren't just limited to shape shifting? OC doesn't answer. He simply smiles and then changes the subject. Anyway, the warmongers are rapidly expanding their influence. They are ahead of both the south and the east for now. So, the warmongers is eponymous for 
the west. Uh, for the east, I suppose that is eponymous for Utopia. I'm not sure what the south uh, is supposed to have, though. The two most active of their many members are the strategist from the land of Oa, Tanatomo Ken Keno Inusaka, and their shield, Yasuyori Kobungu Inuta, two Hakenshis, uh, one of which has been released and the other is just restricted to art and chapter 10. Did you say Tanatomo Inusa Inusaka and Yasuyori Inuta? Apparently, they each have orbs similar to Tanatomo's. Perhaps they are related in some way. Would you mind passing that information on to Tadatomo as well? I'm sure he'd be delighted to hear it. Alright, Ose. What do you want from me in return for this list? After skimming through the list of names, Kotano burns and, and turns a look of suspicion on Ose. Oh, it's just a trifle. A transient named Break arrived in Tokyo recently. Break. And what do you want me to do if I find this transient? Catch them? Not at all. Quite the opposite. If you see him, do nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I would prefer you just to look the other way. In this line of work, I get a lot of odd requests, but this one is pretty strange. Surely you understand. Like you, I had my own entanglements before winding up in this Tokyo. Oh, weren't you a ranking officer in the Gehenna military? Oh, not professional entanglements. Sally, it's a little more complicated. It's tough being this good looking, you see. <laughs> what? What is he implying? <laughs> in any case, this request is more personal than official in nature. Farewell then, Okotaro. I'll see you again when things start to get thrilling. For the last time, I don't need your thrills. I just need the coin to feed my underlings, okay? Jeez. Good grief. I'm not cut out for this sort of job. What a bother. Then again, if Odin's familiar hasn't shown up here in Tokyo. Has shown up here in Tokyo. I have no choice but to act. Odin's familiar would be... Uh, something and something. There's like two of them or something. They're like crows. That were acting in his place because he couldn't enter because uh, pure, either Perrin or some other person who had the same role in rule already existed. Osei sighs dramatically, his shoulders heaving up and down. Then he casts his sighs up, up to the sky. I'll just have to be alert until this job's over. As for the one who calls himself Break, I'll have him run himself ragged, taking all the sights of this battlefield called Tokyo. Then he, or rather they, and do what they feel is necessary. That is the wish my client and I both share. <sighs> I'm back. The transformation wore off. The Golden Chalice sacred artifact has lost its glow and breaks hand. Huh. As if it is rare that the wielder is not its true owner. Was the woman I transformed to? The owner of this magical bowl? <laughs> that is right, Break. We have replicated the wielder of that sacred artifact. That voice again, you. You reside with me, don't you? Exactly. We are glad that you are finally calm enough to listen to us. Who are you? Now that I really listen, I can tell there is more than one voice. Are there... two of you? The memory unit will answer. There is a record of us once being called Huggin and Manin, Thought and Memory. So that's them. They are uh, Odin's tool. They were once Odin's tool anyways, uh, in order to capture the bodies from memories or something. And uh... yeah. Hmm... But then they were kept. I'm not sure at some point they were transformed into a war machine uh, by Utopia. The Type B model. That was the second uh, plan from Utopia, anyways. Further note from the Thought Unit I convert information provided by the Memory Unit into thoughts. 
At present, we operate as support units within this body, aiding you, the main persona. Think of us as units that manage and recreate the thoughts and memories of all those who inhabit this body. The thoughts and memories of... So there are others inside me, aside from you two? Correct. You are the main persona, but this body does not only belong to the three of us. All the memories, thoughts, and detailed physical configurations of those who have accomplished their roles in this world are able to be recorded and recreated by the use of nano machines. That woman was a part of that record then. Correct. According to the logs, the record was registered by an unknown source before the main persona was activated. Oh, how come? Who would do that? And for what? What's the point? Support units. Why was I sent here? For what purpose? Tell me. We are not authorized to answer that question. As we have told you, you are the main persona of this body. What does that... You are the one authorized to decide this body's best course of action. I'm authorized to decide? Then I have to. On my own. That is correct. What is your next objective? We will provide support as needed. I... Ugh. Shit! <laughs> Gotta love that catchphrase. I managed to take the glass group out using the poison from the, ch the chalice, but I didn't recount on reinforcements. I see, so... That is what happened with uh, how Ark was saved. Reinforcements flanked the windows, standing out in the beating w wind. All at once, they closed into Saren Blake. Despite appearances, they're professionals. They know about the poison now. The others would have warned them. Hostile presence detected. Thought unit suggests an expeditious retreat to sustain the body. Telling me to run, huh? I don't know what they're after or how many there are, so as a soldier, I know that's the way to go. But I can't. There must be other targets under attack in this building. If we're gonna run, then we do so after saving everyone. Got it? Confirmation request from Thought Unit. What is the reason for this decision? Because we all need to be saved sometimes. Just like I was in the park. Why? Why would you do this for me? You stand to gain nothing by saving me. Why would you willingly put yourself in danger? I was saved, so I'll do the same. That's all there is to it. Response from main persona confirmed by thought unit. Activate in combat mode. Suggestions from memory unit. User data for the sacred activated located behind you is available for use. Sacred artifact? You mean this black helm? Whoa, not again. Something's expanding inside of me. M my body is changing. Does he have data on Stuart or two? <laughs> Panic stares amongst the wrestlers. What? That world representative was reported as having been eliminated. Congrats, Iris, your man's alive. Alright, done. What do you think, Zalotl? Haha, <laughs> he did get new eyes. <laughs> Aww. Whoa, this is awesome. I can see clear as day. You really like how those prosthetic eyes of yours work, huh? Isn't our tech great? <laughs> I'm blown away. I, I can see way better now. Oh, Mr. Shockerman. Thank you so much for this present. I'll have to tell her that in person later. And thanks to you, Matsumata. I'm going to cherish these prosthetics. <laughs> As an engineer, I'm more than grateful to hear that. Well then, this completes our transaction. Now if you could sign right here. Okay. Aw, oh, I can't wait to see everyone's faces. Uh, what's all that ruckus outside? Either Hephaestus came back, or Takamaru is... Hmm? Hmm. Unannounced guests? Don't come in uninvited. What were you do raising up? <clears throat> the assailants released their sacred artifacts, coiling rubber around Amatsumaru's body. 
What are you doing? Don't you know the Kamatsu Guild is a neutral territory? Go ah! The rubber sacred artifacts wrap around Amatsumara's body, Titan. This is nothing. Was my muscles? Mm -hmm. Rather than loosening or breaking, the rubber expands, bites further into the body. Ugh. Ugh. My muscles aren't. <laughs> Amatsumara! Who are you, twisted? Hold it right there, you overgone Chihuahua Hueno. Chihuahua Hueno. <laughs> okay. Chihuahua Hueno. You don't want to hurt this old timer, do you? <laughs> We're the bad guys in this bout, so we don't mind getting a little savage. Ah ha ha. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Can't you at least give me some time to... Ah! If that's the game, then it's time to shine. Aren't they overdoing it a bit, though? Damn right. I think they're getting too into those roles of theirs. Like players on a damn stage, even if they do drop dead in the act. Whoops, let my guard down there. Take this! You okay, Grams? Looks like I made it in time to keep up my reputation as a hired sword, huh? Musashi laughs as he unties the Matsumara. You made it just in time, Misashi. Who are these strange fellows? Dunno, but the workshop is filled with them. Huh? Um, maybe we should find somewhere safe to hide and... Hold up, old chap. Didn't we have some guests? That's right! Arson! Hold on, Zalotl. Musashi, you and I are going too. Oi, wait up! This area is not... Our job isn't finished until we get the signed delivery slip. Plus, it's not like we can go about putting our guests in danger. That's just not our way. Amatsumara follows Zalotl out through the door at her run. Ugh, damn it! Don't leave your bodyguard behind, Gramps. Karma Tension Part 2. Battles with some wrestlers. Mm. Literally pointless. <laughs> I guess he's fine with that one. Wait, maybe he can close the guts card? Yeah, sure, why not? When are we gonna visit the tycoons? The Therian wrestler strikes a pose, then lifts up a mysterious sphere that almost looks like a black hole. That's that's right. With this one trinket, we can join our happy family of strong luchadoras today. Woo -hoo! The wrestlers line up, striking another impressive pose. You can buy one from the merch area out in front. Buy now and get a replica Humble Tiger mask for free free of chip. Ah! <laughs> yeah, shut the trap. Our chains wrap unsparingly around Humble Tiger as the wrestler winks at the imaginary camera. <laughs> all right, that should be all of them. How careless! Lining up right in front of me. Arky yanks one of their chains, sending Humble Tiger flying through the air and leaving Therian dangling from one of. Them. The beams spanning the workshop's roof. Uh, Attacking while I was busy hyping up the viewers. Such badassery. You're the real deal as a Rudo. Hey, how about it? Will you join our federation? Uh, federation? The heck is that? Who are you anyways? Are you after us or the Kamata Guild? Sorry, but this isn't going to be pretty. I'm not a softie like Garrison. <laughs> Don't hold back. Hey, we're here to interview Homeward Tiger. Homeward, how are you feeling? A wrestler suddenly appears from the shadows, thrusting the mic under Homeward Tiger's nose. Ha. <laughs> ha. Uh, huh? I feel great! I won't be beaten by such a cowardly move. Homeward Tiger grimaces, then turns his head to the mic once more and shouts. You will never break my lucha spirit! I won't give up, even if the odds of winning are close to none! Words of wisdom spoken by Homer Tiger. You heard it here first, folks. 
We'll be printing that out on the next t-shirt. The fans will go crazy over it. Here we go. Two Puedes. Hombre Tigre, you've got this. Cheering Hombre Tigre all at once, the wrestlers display perfect unity. Gracias, gracias. Thank you, my friends. Um, excuse me. Earth to me, head. Attention, please. I am Hombre Tigre, the indomitable luchador. Little did you expect my trump card. Go, my sacred artifact. Hombre Tigre's uniform. Unravels. It shoots straight at Ark. However, sorry, but I've just seen your tricks already. That's just another river sacred artifact, right? Well, if it's rubber, then. <laughs> Ark's chain lights up with flames, melting Homer Tigger's rubber sacred artifact. Everyone knows that rubber is weak against heat. Rawr! It burns! Ah! Rising in pain, Homer Tigger shifts his position to find. An angle that makes him <laughs> look the most attractive. <laughs> Jeez. Damn it. So this is how it ends. Hold it! What? Oh, this. <laughs> Christmas. Well, well, well. Look at you, Homer Tigre. You, the luchador who defeated us. You disappoint me. You, Avalda. What are you doing here? Whoa, don't get the wrong idea. I just won't let you be taken down by another one, anyone other than me. If we combine our strengths, our chances of winning will reach a thousand percent. Whoa, would you look at that, everyone? Those newcomers, could they be? No, Puedo said. It's the trio Omeka, who were defeated by Homer and Tigger last season. Okay. Interesting, Valiant World and uh, Shadow Types, Infernal. I never thought to see the day those legendary luchadores will join forces. Last season? Legendary luchadores? Why do I feel like I'm missing something here? Whatever. That's saving the trouble if they clump up like this. Yeah! While you lot were busy chatting, I made a web of chains all over this workshop. <laughs> Ark does not waste time. <laughs> Coldly, Ark informs the wrestlers of their predicament. Don't underestimate the guild master of the Otomachi Genociders. So, I'll ask you again. What are you a after? <laughs> mm -hmm. A mysterious wrestler suddenly steps out of Humber to your shower, then sudden. With movements that seem to defy the laws of physics, the shadow silhouette com throws a combination of punches and kicks at Ark. <laughs> Ark dodges superbly and renews their hold on her chains. Bind it, my chains! Ark casts their chains in an attempt to string the mysterious rest of her butt. The chains pass through the wrestler's body like arrows through smoke. The wrestler continues acting. Attacking. His movements, yet again, seemingly defying the conventions of physical limitations. I feel like I'm fighting against an illusion or something. What is this? Oh dear. Rex met his match. Their match. <sighs> I have to hurry. Ark is fighting! While Ark is fighting the wrestlers, someone can be seen traveling up a set of stairs. Racing to save the day, you emerge from Faces' underground dungeon. <laughs> your repaired sword sacred artifact shines on your group. Have faced this. Do you remember what the faces told you as you're in? I want to tell you more, so you need to hurry back. Alright. Then, here. I made a quick fix. Have faced this passes your sacred artifact, now part. Did you fix it? You might be misunderstanding the issue. The sword is probably isn't physically broken. First of all, if a sacred artifact breaks on impact, it should go back to normal after closing the app, right? But it remained broken. Then what's with my sword? Closing the app didn't work. One thing would remain even after closing the app, though. Memories. Light trapped inside the sacred artifact. The information stored in it. Sacred artifacts are vessels of rules that depend on memories, on faith, on what the many believe. 
Originally, your sword, Mama, was filled with the rules believed by 23 worlds. What if something new was added, and the capacity was exceeded? It's not hard to imagine a sacred artifact a mask whose memories remain broken. I've never heard of such a thing, though. If I may add, this is only speculation, but perhaps that sacred artifact is trying to break out of its shell and be reborn into a new form. Reborn? I'm always told that I am useless at explanations. I'm sorry if you don't understand. What if, like a baby bird hatched from an egg, your sword is trying to rebirth itself into a newer, bigger form? Like every living thing needs nutrition to grow, this sacred artifact needs a larger vessel. It needs to make a new vessel? That's right. But the material required to make that vessel, well, I don't have enough dark matter. I've patched it up is all I have, but that's not enough. And Sink tells me soon it will exceed its capacity. Is Lil Salmon okay? Lil Salmon? Is that the name of that draconic exception residing within that sacred artifact? Lil Salmon is... That's right. Within that sword is a rule that escaped that system with no vessel in which to be carried. Huh. A rule that escaped its system with no vessel in which it to be carried. Salmon's rule? Uh... Legend says an exception should take the shape of a former owner of the relevant sacred artifact. Hmm. Well, it's not very common to be able to talk to an exception. So that's why we didn't see any other second exceptions. Like in every other chapter, we saw t oh, we always saw two exceptions. Like, um, you know, we always saw it in chapter three, Oniwaka turned into exception along with a Thor, Thor being summoned, and in chapter four we saw like. Uh, Zabania turned into a second along with uh, the. Um, it was either Fish King or uh, the other guy, Yukimura, and then vice versa for the next chapter with uh, Ophelon and uh, Yukimura or Fish King. I always forget which one is such. But when Shiro made an exception uh, with the, the protagonist, with me, he. It was only just uh, Yogg's of Thoth, and I was wondering, what, like, we all was, were running. Oh, well, I guess everyone was reading translation wasn't wondering anymore. But yeah. The other exception would just was always there. It was Solomon. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but whittling parts of Mama's memory from sacred artifact and labeling them onto the rule might just make that possible. Let's see. So it's uh, like a holdback mechanism, a safety feature. This is what they were talking before. So that he's not overflowing with memories, but at the same time it lets him be able to talk to the exception that is little Solomon uh, without losing their money. Mind. Maybe. It's some feeling. Exception or no? Is Lil Salmon okay? The face just concentrates the fire in his eyes and studies your blade. Ah, uh, yes. I see a figure beyond the seams of the systematic Patrick Sacred Artifact. Systemic Patrick Sacred Artifact. So, system. Huh. <sighs> Okay, so a system doesn't just have to include like the worlds of Tokyo and all that. It literally can include any sort of subsystem. It, and in fact, it includes one's own body and it can include any sort of. Like. Yeah, it literally is a system. Just. Um, things. A whole bunch of things can, that interact with each other that are self contained. And that could refer to like a particular world or a particular building or in this case, it's referring to Sacred Artifact. And. Uh, Hephaestus was trained the protagonist with his own sort of like uh, inventions that were their own system. So it kind of is a literal system. It seems as though the dragon is very afraid. I don't know what happened, but it is scared. Like a hatchling, afraid to come out of its shell. Ah, uh, of course. It's just like me. So well, someone's okay. Even if your sacred artifact is broken, that doesn't mean the exception, the way we're ruled, will disappear. Sacred artifacts, in and of themselves, are safety measures designed to carry and safely use these dangerous rules. Huh, so they're limiters, sort of. This sacred artifact, which is double layer of, with its double layer of safety measures, is one of a kind, you see. 
No one would be afraid of his exceptions if they disappeared so easily. That old man once said that secret artifacts are like our own arms and legs. If we don't properly understand ourselves, then you'll never work properly. Okay, I don't understand what the fuck So, the... Uh, the Boundless Tale has two safety features. One of them is... Mm, one of them is the, the memory uh, inhibitor, which is unique to this one, and then the other is just uh, being able to uh, withhold the rule. Hold down the rule, I guess. So we have both the limitation on our memory and our rule. That's what our sacred artifact does. I think. A vision of his own sacred artifact flashes through her face to his mind. But, if you're ready to know, if you realize that the artifact is part of our body, he said, they will respond to us then. If that dragon is part of Mama's memories, then it must be so. To face this. I'm sorry, Mama. Speculating is the one thing an engineer shouldn't do. Anyways, you shouldn't wield your sword doubled like that for a little while. Who knows what could happen to you if you... The tremendous power of that rule float into your body every time. If you must use it, then I, I will temper it for you. So long as there's enough material, I can enlarge your vessel. So please, Mama. Sweet to face this. Huh? What? <laughs> uh, Mama, why? Oh, uh, of course. This is all I needed. <laughs> I've been so blind. Her face just laughs, then once they are fully registered what is happening. Ah, uh, ah! Uh, no, you shouldn't, Mama! You're making me. Ah! Uh. Her face just. His face flushes brightly as a flow of ruby red bursts from his nose, and he soon collapses. What? Um. Oedipus Cop. Uh, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> Whoa, what? The ground is shaking! Whoa! Turn out voice acting. So many stairs. Is this where I was before? You... Where the hell have you been hiding? I'm here to help Ark. Out of my way! Oh, there's battle. Okay, sure. Well, looks like he already has his charge up. Not that it matters to Bori. ボックスイトンのジュツ。シカハシャ。これ、本当に。シカハシャ。これ、本当に。シカハシャ。これ、本当に。シカハシャ。これ、本当に。シカハシャ。これ、本当に。シカハシャ。これ、本当に。シカハ
We, the people of El Dorado, have been trained since birth to devote ourselves to the endless war. Everyone who lived in this world is a dedicated soldier. We fight on, honoring the role we have been given. The most worthy of those soldiers will become honored as the ones who will be sacrificed to the sun. You think that is cruel? What gives you that impression? All those who become sacrifices feel only one thing, the great joy of becoming one with the bright one. Look up and see the beautiful sun. Can't you see how brightly it shines, suspended in the sky? It would be sheer arrogance to look upon its presence. That is our one true sun. Our black sun, the one most high, we call it Tezcatlipoca. I am Homri Tigre, the general of El Dorado. I am the mightiest known among even the best of men. Today, this body that I have trained hard to attain will finally be sacrificed to Tezcatlipoca. The memory of this day will remain with me forever, etched in my soul for all eternity. My arms and legs strapped to the altar, my heart offered up to the sun. I gaze up, as I gaze up at it, I see the sun change shape for the first time. It is a mirror, slowly releasing black smoke and transforming into the shape of a dragon. Ah, uh, how m majestic. This is the true form of Tezcatlipoca. Part of Tezcatlipoca flows into my cold body. His cold- did he just die? My heartless chest begins to beat again. Huh. I see. So his heart was sacrificed, but then he regained his ability to uh, have blood flow again. I have been kept alive by something other than myself. My body now belongs to Tuscat Lipoca. I have no idea when this heart will stop beating. I was able to become the sacrificial Nahuel of Nazcatlipoca. Tezcatlipoca, Tezcatlipoca, Tezcatlipoca. My body trembles with joy. Finally, I have become one with the sun. I will keep on fighting for the ever-burning sun. I will live each moment, giving to me by the sun to its fullest. I will live each moment, given to me by the sun to its fullest. Oh, Yet, before my eyes, a light as bright as the sun shrouds my vision. It is of a different hue somehow. In the moment before I was blinded, I saw what looked like a shining feather dragon. It was like a false sun, a carbon copy of Tezcatlipoca. A dragon. Two suns now clash above the altar that I lie on. I listen to Tezcatlipoca's voice as the two bright novas emulate everything around me. To my eyes, Tezcatlipoca is immensely enjoying the battle. His battle cry is that of a soldier at the height of elation. The second son, however, seems to have something to convey to me as well, screaming out its question in the midst of battle. It asks me why. Why am I doing this? Or at least, that's what I seem to hear. I feel the other son's burning glare bore into me. I am mesmerized by that solar struggle. It is a blindingly beautiful clash of forces. Ah... Uh, I wish I could fight like that. Live like that. Some time passes, and the other sun drifts beyond the golden boundary and falls from the edge of the world. The true sun, Tuscatlipoca, has won. As it's Nahual, I should let out a cry of triumph. But I can't seem to do it. I am unable to move. Tuscatlipoca has left me alone, looking so sad. It looks as though he is mourning the briefness of the battle. Ah, uh, if only eternity existed in this world. If only could be war could be endless. I could be suspended within it forever, always, until the end of time. Hmm. Alice stares out of the window, the locked room within the Tower of Babel. Good day, Lady Alice of the Game Masters. I've come in representation of the Yura Kucho Guild, the entertainers. Oh, Christine, 
I am ever so happy to see you. I'm positively moved to tears. Of course, I would be even happier if you might find it in you to let me out of this cage, dearest Martionis. Forgive me, my dear Alice, for I am not but a powerless actress. I am not yet permitted to set foot upon this stage called Tokyo. Until the time comes to make my entrance, I am simply warming the seat that is mine to fill. Of course, this waiting isn't so bad. As a result, I am able to visit you here, after all. Tell me, Christine, how are things outside? I did hear that another exception had occurred in Otomachi, and so I tried to make my way there. That is my duty as one affiliated with the Game Masters, whose credo is to see to the smooth implementation of this game. Before I arrived, however, I was recalled. I know nothing at all of what happened since. I've even been prohibited from contacting my outside source, Jambavan. I'm ever so bored. Do tell Christine. How is the exception handled? Tokyo appears not to have undergone any significant changes to speak of. Perhaps I oughtn't be been involved at all. Oh, but I do worry. What if Humpty Dumpty should fall, and all the king's horses and all the king's men should fail to fix him? Dear Alice, you have quite the poetic inclination associating exceptions with Humpty Dumpty. All you need to know is that the exception which occurred in Otomachi reverted back to its normal state. The Game Masters did not consider that incident a threat to the game's continuance. It occurred in a perfectly controlled environment created by the world representatives of Eden and Takamagahara. Takamagahara. The Game Masters' upper echelon considered its regular operation, which is exactly what the world representatives were commenting on. I do hope you'll forgive my rudeness, Christine, but... Were you not the one who influenced my superiors into seeing it as so? It would certainly be more interesting if that were the case. You are, after all, the type of person to do that sort of thing. <laughs> Thank you for your kind words. But you overestimate me. I am mo no more or less than a simple actress. Very well. I do you appreciate you filling me in. So, the world representatives, those who consider themselves the core players of this game, have begun their advances across the chessboard. That can only mean... Indeed, my dear Alice, the information you were once tasked with the concealing, that of the game's reward, has been made public. The reward? You mean... Arison? Me? Yes. The reason the world representatives were summoned to Tokyo, Yggdrasil and the world of the old ones might not apply, but... The pro prohibition period for interference in the six central wards of Tokyo has now ended as well. Mm. At last, it is over. I si simply can't believe it's already been so long. So there is some sort of embargo information. There was once a loop during which the game was broken, turning into a sort of first come first serve situation. The world representatives then signed a treaty based on guidelines designated by the Game Masters. Ah, so they do defer to the Game Masters. Those terms prohibited interactions with the trophy for a set of period of time in subsequent loops. Hmm. Interactions in subsequent loops. So that's why like they didn't all assault the player all at once in the beginning. The players planned their actions around that treaty, am I correct? Yes, you are. Oh, that, uh, that is the result of another Game Master's action. Well, one way or another, this game played out in Tokyo has entered its next phase. In light of that, the world representatives, who have been effectively waiting by the sidelines, are now coming into play. Oh, well if you put it that way... And this is merely the progression of a loop of this caucus race. The world representatives will soon tear the other guilds apart and consume them, splitting Tokyo into three factions. The east, the west, and the south. All of the many guilds currently existing in Tokyo will be whittled down to the three true guilds as usual. Mm. Of course, we game masters and entertainers who work behind the scenes to raise production value are exempt. Entertainment value? Production value? Hmm. 
This time around, the Western Guild, the Warmongers, are taking the leading initiative among the three. The Warmongers, is it? Those who wish to fight eternally over what y you call their award. So they just want the loops to keep on going on to fight over them. So it's actually in the, the, their best interest, the Warmongers, to make sure that they... Uh, the protagonist is uh, never actually, like, one, even to, to themselves. That guild has managed to bring the Berserkers in to the brink of destruction. It's only a matter of time before the Outlaws and the Beast Tamers go down. Rip blade. They are advancing in other areas as well, bolstering their fighting stress rapidly. Typically, the world representatives are wary of one another, making direct contact with the reward only later on in the game. But it seems that the world representatives of Eldorado, who stands at the fore of the Moolongers, cannot wait any longer. That would be just Kalipoka. He should be making a move presently, if he has not done so already. That's more than enough, Christine. I finally come to understand why my work was risked right out of my hands. My part to play in this loop has drawn to an end. Those world representatives know more about exceptions than even I do. They know they can use the loops to undo any mistakes made so they have no fear of the apocalyptic nature of exceptions. Even if the world ends, they can simply try again and again, using their newfound knowledge to their advantage. I see. So they want to win somehow, even if it means using exceptions, because they can always just restart. Um, well, maybe not the warmongers who just wants to restart the entire game over and over again. The lives of all of Tokyo's inhabitants are, yet again, in the palms of the 21 world representatives. We have no choice but to bend to their whims until all, all comes to an end. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Whatever do you mean, Christine? If those world representatives think they know everything there is to know about the exceptions, then their very arrogance might prove to be their downfall. That would be very interesting. Oh, do dispense with the ambiguity if you please. Do you mean to imply that something is different in this loop? The world representatives of Eagersil and the world of the old ones, Searcher and Azathoth, have dropped out. However, their demise was quite different from that of your average loop. Owing to the advent of that exception, they have fulfilled the desires that called them here and vanished from this Tokyo. So when they dropped that before, they never actually fulfilled their contract. They never actually fulfilled their roles, their desires, or what, what, what you may call it. But in this loop they did. That means their ties to Tokyo have been severed, and they have returned to their own world. Their roles fulfilled. Ah, because they were able to fill, fill, uh, Search was able to fill the role of father, I guess? And I'm not sure what Azazel's role was. Um, I don't know. If the loop occurs again, it is unlikely that, that they will be revived here in Tokyo. Hmm. So that is a pretty big difference then. If it looks soon, they won't reappear. Why would they not? Hmm. I don't know. What? There have been others who have fulfilled their roles, though. They themselves are not role representatives. Why? That is unheard of. To my knowledge, no such thing has ever taken place during any of the past loops here. What could possibly be happening? If any others follow them, if this is the beginning of the end, then this game that has repeated countless times in this walled-off Tokyo might finally be coming to an end. Permanent dropouts. Because they fulfilled their roles. Let's make it to the top. Is that a shadow? <laughs> the mysterious being lunges at Ark, its body writhing. Bind it, my chains! Arc flings their chained sacred artifact out to intercept the assailant, but the chains whiz right through the shadowy opponent. This isn't a shadow. If it were, I could capture it with my sacred artifact. Is it some kind of spell? Ugh! The back smoke concentrates and closes in on Arc, punching right th through them with its huge arm. It's like it isn't even real. My chains are not. What? Ah! No physical impact or sense of pain follows in the wake of the back smoke's punch. Instead. Oh! 
This is how it is to read the memories. An unknown memory flows into Art's mind. Uh, what was that? Huh? Art's grip loosens, allowing the chains that bind the wrestlers to unwind. Damn. Bravo, bravissimo. <laughs> wrestlers, three of their bindings surround Ark. The black smoke changes shape, growing long and thin, then leaps into the mount of Humber Tigger's body as it falls from above in an aerial dive. So, that shadow, or that black smoke, uh, at least according to that backstory we got from Humber Tigger, is likely uh, some sort of a placement from Tezcatli Poca, or the replacement of his heart, perhaps. But yeah, that is like Tezcatli Poca would be a part of him at that point. I don't know. A pulse returns to- yeah, that was his heart. A pulse returns to Humbert Tigger's previously lifeless body. Uh, uh, my heart beats once again. As if he's saying a prayer, Humbert Tigger puts his hand over the left side of his chest, closing his eyes and feeling the beating of his heart. I haven't allowed to continue this fight. Is that Black Smoke a sacred artifact? No, it can't be. I felt it swell. And must be a transient, which means... Someone else is inside the home to get? Tascali Poka. Who are you? Get a good luck! I am the one su who surrendered my heart to the sun. I have nothing but pride and joy for that fact. All I want is to continue my Lucia, to go on fighting. Tascali Poka heard my selfish request. Its presence still lives within my heart. All I ask is that I live La Lucha Loca for as long as this body moves. This Katli Poka, is that the name of the Black Smoke? See, si, and I am the Nahual of Scatli Poka. I am known as Ombra Tigre, the number one luchador of El Dorado and the commander. Get ready to rumble, Rudol. I wish to have no regrets, even if my heart bursts in battle. That's the kind of lucha I live for. Viva Tascatli Poka! Ark is now completely surrounded by wrestlers, and they are slowly closing in. At that exact moment. Ah, oh, finally we're here. Not so fast! Yeah. You came. Ark gently hugs you back. I'm just struggling slightly. I'm so glad you're okay. I... I knew you would come back. I believe in you. Uncompromisingly. The rest of us surround you and Ark, leaving no openings in the ranks. Yet you still jump from prey, knowing that your weapon, your sword, is at a disadvantage against a large number of opponents. But then... Twisted Bastion! How dare you run mock in our workshop? You're all going to pay for this! Jesus Christ, where the fuck were all of y'all this time? Iron Graze Dragon! Ugh. Seriously, you guys like took your sweet ass time. Where the fuck is Kurigani? The impact created by the collisions of Zalotl's and Matsumara's secret artifact blast uh, and surrounding enemies away. Uh, 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 I want to hug them both, but Zalato's a dog, so I'm okay. <laughs> no, you shouldn't do that in a place like this. But I'm also glad you're okay, Arson. Zalato awkwardly pushes his big arms around your back and hugs you back. So, what's going to pay for the damages to our workshop? I'm here too, and I'm stronger than before thanks to Mr. Sakuman's gift. I'm going to do my best as bodyguard and have Mr. Sakuman praise me. Are those eyes prosthetic? <laughs> That's right! Another quality product made by cra the crafters. This lets me see clo clearly. Here, let me take a look at you. Is there something wrong? Why are you staring? Oh. Jalal so takes a step closer to study your face. Hmm. What? Uh. The law takes another step forward, and then... Ah! Ah! Hey! 
Why are you? What are you doing here? Kets Zalkoto. Sure. But Zalkoto. I know. The black smoke overlapping Homer Tigger's figure seems to rise as low and after. A long story. Let's keep going. At the boundary, part one. 